Okay, so for this tutorial, I just wanted to go over my prototype slash beta watch out control application uh, built in touch designer temporarily. Um, if there's interest or people get excited about it, maybe I'll try to build it uh, in a web app or you know, something like that. Um, but here are the features. So if I open up another a watch out show, here we go. So I have a ton of timelines. So if I project Lodox timelines, it'll populate a list of all my timelines. And so you have control to run timelines. So you can see it, you know, it triggers them. Um, I can pause. So that's pretty cool. Um, you know, a few other features that really make this that's pretty powerful. Um, you know, I have a lot of right here. I have a lot of timelines running pause. Um, I can just reset all my timelines, stop them all. That's pretty, pretty helpful. Um, obviously, you know, you could do that inside a watch out alone. So you don't necessarily need that. But um, another, you know, the most powerful tool that we have available in, in this is actually the countdown timer functionality that I have built into this thing. So, so the idea here is that we have a countdown timer between control named control cues. So, if you so if I have, let's I'll just find the timeline one. So timeline one has two control cues: one that starts at the two-second mark and one that starts at ten seconds. So the expected behavior would be a countdown. Uh, two second countdown and then an eight second countdown. Um, so uh, we'll just see what happens here. So timeline one, um, what I have to do first is uh, get control cues for timeline one. So well, they're already there, but I just double checked. So when I run this, it'll start that and then counts down, you know, it counts down to the cues that it had here. Um, you can see that. So stop that timeline and it goes back to two. So on timeline two, I have uh, four cues, kind of the same thing, three seconds. So we'd expect the three second countdown and then a 12 second countdown and then five seconds. So, so get control cues for timeline two. So we have a populated list. I do have a ton of timeline uh, control cues on this. So let me stop that. Um, so we can do that. There are more control cues on this and I just didn't show you, but um, so I run this three seconds and then it's going to go down to a 12 second, you know, so um, that's pretty cool. And then also we have on go to control queue behavior. So right here, it's going to be halt. So go to a three second and that updates that list. So being able to actually jump to control queues, which which is huge, really. I mean, you know, we we don't really have that available in in many other external control applications and certainly not countdown timer that automatically gives you that. Oh, another cool feature is, let's say you have a bunch of timelines running. You can stop everything except a certain timeline. So timeline six, so you do timeline. So you timeline six, then you hit that and it stops everything, but continues. That thing, you just uh, continues to run. So that's pretty cool as well. So um, another, wait, what? let's see, layer conditions. <coughs> So layer conditions are a little complicated, but you have to, you know, I have, I clicked those three and it populates with, with those. And um, so, and then another thing is the open display list. So this is pretty helpful. See so that you can just get your display names as well as 
the stage dimensions and their positions. So one really helpful thing when you're building your show is having the IP addresses. So let's just display one. I'll just punch in an IP. Oh, weird. Um, 10.0.1.3 and then uh, 10.0.1.4. So what you'd expect. So you open display list and and now you can see your IP addresses and your output. So really, this is for making sure that you didn't mess anything up. Um, you can just make sure you don't have anything on this, the wrong IP address. Um, let's see. Yeah, aux, aux lister config just allows you to change the width of things. That's it's a little <laughs> finicky that it's stretching like that, but um, you can change the row height so that you can see them all. Let's see, set all to set all to one. Oh, that's pretty cool. I actually forgot that I added that in there. Um, default index, this config header font size. You can change your font size. Uh, you know, it's. Yeah, so uh, you know, that, I think that's that's really it. I mean, it's if if there's any interest in it, you can get it on my my GitHub page, and I'll I'll post that in the the uh, description. Um, and on as always, uh, if you like content I'm putting out, feel free to subscribe. I'll be putting out a lot more videos in the coming weeks, so stay tuned.